cloud chamber and how to make a simple Wilson cloud chamber in order to see radioactive particles. And in that way we can investigate some radioactivity. Uh, safety, as always, is important. Goggles, uh, you want insulated gloves, uh, lab coat uh, and or apron. Handle the dry ice with the insulated gloves and tongs. Wear goggles throughout the lab until the radioactive source and the dry ice are put away. And care with the propan tool using a well ventilated area and away from any source of fire or heat. Uh, and you can pause here to look at the material, uh, the list, and indeed the diagram of a transparent container sitting on top of a block of dry ice. Uh, but it's had some uh, black paper put on the base and around the side, and it's also got a window and a slot for the radioactive source, but read that one carefully. And here's uh, a diagram, and you're going to use a flashlight to uh, put light through a little window. I uh, haven't drawn the uh, black covering on the side of the cloud chamber, uh, but it is indeed there. And opposite the, the flashlight, we've got the uh, radioactive source which is going to here provide uh, alpha particles and again be careful with uh, dry ice. So set up the cl cloud chamber um, with uh, the construction paper, the black paper um, soaked with uh, the propan tool uh, and the sides and leave for four or five minutes. You want some of it to vaporize. And uh, wearing gloves, place the uh, uh, the gas mantle, uh, the center of the gas mantle, just make a little sort of screw from that point and just put it uh, through uh, the hole in the side of your cloud chamber. Uh, leave for another minute, uh, put it on, uh, it's on the dry ice, and leave for another minute and point the flashlight through to be able to view uh, any particles that you, you see uh, as there's condensation in the, the propanol. So this is how it works. Uh, the alcohol is volatile and vaporizes reasonably easily and particularly from the sides and when the propan tool reaches the bottom of the container it's getting cold and it really wants to condense but you need something to nucleate the condensation and if there's dust um, as with uh, water vapor particles forming clouds in, in the air. Uh, here you've got alpha particles from the radioactive source and the tracks form as the propan tool condenses around the motion of the alpha particles. And just a small diagram here that you can uh, see what one of the tracks. Um, now you're going to see the video uh, note the number, length, direction, intensity of the tracks. Uh, well, you'll probably lose count, but um, uh, describe at least five of them really well. And it also says to watch the lab part of the video a second time uh, to see if you can observe fainter tracks as well. So look really, really closely at it. Put the, the lamp on. When do I lift it up? Uh, and you can lift it upwards and then look down. And hopefully we'll see some tracks. Those there were some good tracks. Good.
Yes. But, uh, that's very nasty. Where do you get your oh, sauce from? Hold your bit. Sorry, I know this is cheap. I was trying to itch it. Oh. Um, it's, well, in the mantle, it's thorium 232. Ooh. It's just, oh, that's just that mantle. Yes. So that's it's radiating us all the time. Yes. But it's a. Well, why do you use thorium in a mantle? Um, yeah. it oh. just, it doesn't burn. Gosh, and can you still buy those mantles? Well, apparently, well, I bought this one with the kit. Wow. And it comes with a notice saying that it isn't a, you know, hazard or a something or other. This spoon I'm is for low for that. Yeah. You are the real s um, And you can do an additional cloud chamber activities, um, rubbing silk over the lid of the cloud chamber as you can see the tracks there, what happens to them, place a magnet over the lid of the cloud chamber. And sometimes you see the curved tracks of the beta particle, high energy electrons. Um, there's two diagrams from, from CERN uh, to show the difference. The alpha particles are much, much stronger uh, line. And you can do this experiment without a radioactive source and you might see tracks from background radiation, uh, from radon, from rocks, etc. And from cosmic radiation, which is everywhere uh, on Earth. Um, and most of the cosmic radiation doesn't uh, reach the surface of the Earth. But the muons, described as heavy electrons, do reach the Earth. And you can see they're really faint. Uh, you probably won't won't see those in the video that uh, that you've just looked at. And a reminder about alpha particles, high energy helium nuclei, so they, they really have a two, two plus charge because they're not helium atoms, they're just the nucleus. So tiny, tiny compared with the size of an atom, made up of two protons, two neutrons, and so a mass of four. And so once you have uh, lost uh, an alpha particle, you've lost two protons, so its position, that atom's position in the periodic table, will move to places lighter, uh, with atomic mass four less. And for beta particles, very high energy electrons, uh, so if you lose a beta particle, it's formed when a neutron is converted into a proton, a beta particle, and a massless antineutrino. So you get the beta particle, radioactive material, you now have an extra proton in your nucleus. So in terms of the periodic table, it now has a mass and an atomic number, one larger, so you've moved one place to the right on the periodic table. The ionizing radiation, um, no mass, very short wavelength, very high energy, uh, electromagnetic radiation. And you can pause with this one to look at uh, the summary of uh, all the radioactive particles. We've been really tracking the alpha particle. And to find out a little bit more about their effects, um, suggest you pause on these to, to read them, uh, elements which produce it, just a selection, and effect on health. Ditto for the beta particle, um, and elements that produce radioactive uh, from decay of the nucleus, and uh, again the effect on tissue and DNA, and here are the gamma rays to uh, complete the uh, three radioactive particles that um, from radioactive decay here. And many thanks to Washington International School and their team science.